Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Zero to Trillion presentation. My name is Jose, and I lead the Data Warehouse team at Canva. I am here today with my colleague and friend Krishna, who's a valuable and very skilled data engineer in the team. Before we get started, I would like to quickly shout out and thank Snowflake for giving us this awesome opportunity to share this presentation with all of you. We hope you'll find this time inspiring. Without further ado, let's get started. Today, we will be talking about the following topics. We will start with a bit of context on Canva. We will talk about who we are, what do we do, and we'll also share some data insights on our teams and how they operate. Next, in the tech stack, we will talk about the tools and technologies we use to achieve our goals in the scope of the warehouse. Finally, we will go through how we approach the scale problem. We'll frame this into three parts, the load, the transform, and the people. Let's start with some context on Canva. I would like to mention who we are, what do we do, and how our data teams operate. At Canva, we are on a mission to empower the world to design. We believe that design should be easy and accessible to everyone, everywhere, on every device. Canva was born in 2013 as a small startup, but with huge ideas. Fast forward to 2020, we are on a phase of hyper growth, doubling in size year on year. We currently have 40 million active users per month. We collect more than 1.5 billion events per day and we have more than 50 people working on our data-related teams. Let's talk a little bit more <clears throat> about our data teams. There are three main groups, engineering, analytics, and science. Starting with data engineering, this group is now made of 18 people. It is split into three teams with specific focus. The first of these three teams works around event schemas and streams. The second team focuses on the data infrastructure, platform, and tools. And the third team looks after the data warehouse, where Krishna and I work together. Next, we have the data analytics speciality. With a current headcount of 26, this is the fastest growing data specialty at Canva. Two years ago, there were only five of them. They work spread across different teams, helping improve, track, and experiment their products. Finally, we have the data scientists. At the moment, they have 11 of them and growing steadily. They also work spread across different teams in a similar configuration as the data analysts do. Moving on to the next session, the tech stack. I will cover the tools and technologies that we use to solve different problems of our data pipeline and share a quick diagram to understand how everything fits together. Just to be clear, from now on, the scope of the presentation will be focused around the data warehouse, our own team. Let's jump right into it. In the warehouse team, we aim to build a solution so sweet that our users will enjoy their time on it. The main players on our stack are these. Snowflake is the solution for our cloud warehouse. There are so many good things we like to say about Snowflake, but you will hear about them in a minute. DBT is how we orchestrate our SQL jobs. It's an awesome open source project that solves the orchestration for you and does so much more. If you haven't heard about it, I will encourage you to check them out. Check the links at the bottom of this slide. AWS is the cloud infrastructure that Canva is built upon. In, this, in the warehouse team, we use services such as IAM, S3, EC2, EKS, etc. Fivetran is how we handle third-party loads mainly for marketing purposes. Originally, 
we were developing our own APIs to ingest these sources. Needless to say, it was simply non-scalable. It will take weeks of a full-time engineer to develop an API and lots of time to maintain it. Adopting Fitram allowed us to plug dozens of third-party sources, enabling huge marketing analytics. Finally, we developed our own internal tool, a command line application that we call DW, that we use to abstract a lot of things for our users. For example, authentication, environment, setup, connectivity, and more, it's all handled for this tool. We also use it to perform ad hoc tasks, such as reload a table or set up a new source of ingestion. If I were to give you folks a quick look at our architecture, it will be something like this. In this diagram, you can see Snowflake has two main inputs shown on the left-hand side. On one hand, we have first-party data that comes from S3. It consists of events, data, and database snapshots. Third-party data comes via Fivetran. We currently have more than 40 different systems plugged this way. The load frequency is managed within the application and is roughly happening constantly. Next, we have DBT orchestrating the load of first-party data. We'll get to that in a second, as well as running the transform jobs. Moving on, in the next couple of sections, we will talk about scaling problems. We will explain what were the challenges that we faced and how we solved them. We have been using Snowflake for about a year now. The first challenge we faced when we started the migration was the load. The data sets that we needed to ingest were way too many and way too different. Today, we have more than 20 databases and more than 250 event streams connected to our warehouse. Although the number of sources a year ago were obviously less than nowadays, we knew we had to build a solution pipeline that will scale. We have been using Snowflake for about a year now. The first challenge we faced when we started the migration was the load. The data sets we needed to ingest were way too many and way too different. Today we have more than 20 databases and more than 250 event streams connected to our warehouse. Although the number of sources a year ago were obviously less than nowadays, we knew we had to build a load pipeline which must scale. Most of the databases to load contain structured data. Although in some cases they also had semi-structured data in the, in the form of JSON blobs stored in bar chart columns. On the other hand, events were highly unstructured and their schema very, very dynamic. The load had to be solved in a way that could scale. We needed a simple solution that could be flexible enough to support both cases database snapshots and events data. After a bit of brainstorming, we came with a rather clever solution based on three things, external tables, the variant type, and code generation. As I mentioned earlier, we load our data from S3, and we do this using external tables. They allow you to query the data lake directly. They are the link between the lake and the warehouse. The code in this slide shows you an external table over a data set called user that comes from our profile service. As you can see, the code is very simple. We literally define only one column name partition key, which value comes from parsing the S3 path prefix. This is an important column for two reasons. First, we define the load behavior based on this column. And second, the query performance is improved by reducing read operations or pruning data based on this column as well. Finally, I would like to add that every external table in Snowflake has a column named value that, of type variant that comes by default. This is a very, very important column and, and a fundamental piece of our loading pipeline. It is all thanks to the variant data type, which I will talk about next. 
One of my favorite things about Snowflake is the variant type. This data type is perfect for semi-structured data, JSON blobs, arrays, etc. The variant type doesn't care about schema changes. As long as the value you are inserting is a valid JSON or a valid array, it is OK. We leverage the flexibility of this type to load pretty much anything in a column. When we load the warehouse from external tables, we insert into tables that follows the same structure. Simply two columns, a numeric column partition key and a variant column named value. Whatever data we load, structure or not, we insert in a variant column first. We load first and we deal with schema later. The next step in the load pipeline will be handled by data analysts, which will create views on top of these tables that will parse the variant type into individual columns for easier access. Last but not least, let's talk about code generation. At Canva, we love making complex thing, things simple. And standardization and automation is a great way to achieve this. It is no news that whenever you can standardize and automate something, you must do it. We have a script that takes a configuration file as input and produces all the code required to set up a new load. We generate DDL, SQL, and YAML files. In summary, combining all these three things, external tables, variant type, and code generation, we were able to build a simple and flexible load pipeline that we could automate and keep up with the ever-growing scale. Now I will hand over to Krishna, who's going to run the second half of this presentation. Over to you, Krish. Thank you, Jose. So we've just gone through how we scaled the load. After getting all the data in the warehouse, the next thing to do is to transform it. The challenge for us is to provide the infrastructure and tools to ensure reliability of the pipeline. This is more of a challenge because we've got a growing team of data analysts and scientists, more contributors from the wider Canva organization, and applications and business processes that are downstream and depend on the warehouse. We tackled the challenge with growing teams and pipeline reliability by first letting teams take ownership of the code. But transferring ownership is just the first step. We have to give them the tools necessary to effectively deal with making changes to this pipeline. This is where things like checks and tests come in. Last but not least, a growing team needs space to develop in the warehouse. And one dev environment is just not enough. Data analysts are the experts when it comes to transforming data, and we did not want to be in the way. Data engineers are not required as approvers of changes unless it's a foundational change to the model or if there are performance issues to look into. There's a great deal of trust and responsibility of the data analyst team. And so far, the benefits have largely outweighed the issues. Of course, we want to minimize issues and that's where our infrastructure and tools will help. It's very important to maintain good quality and reliability of the pipeline. We've done well moving things along rapidly, but have built up some reliability debt that we have to pay off. This quarter, we're investing heavily in reorganizing the data warehouse layers. This will set up the foundations to get CI CD tools that will also allow us to check SQL syntax, check freshness of the source data, run data tests, and flag anomalies and issues. With over 25 contributors, it is very difficult and perhaps impossible to share one dev environment and still maintain high feature velocity. In any other data platform, we would have had to fight with the infrastructure to make this possible. 
With Snowflake, this is extremely easy. We've not rolled out this feature yet, but in a few weeks, we'll be introducing tools to let analysts create clones of the production database for each PR that they're working on. The tooling will use Snowflake zero copy clone feature to replicate database schemas for analysts to develop, test, and peer review their change. At the end of the day, the ultimate goal is to use our data and the data platform to create a better product and an experience for our users that is unique and simple. Having Snowflake as our data platform has allowed the data teams to say yes, a whole lot more to different parts of Canva. We have had several use cases come up that have required new ways of presenting and sharing data. Different teams and their use cases require different levels of access. For example, some require access to event level data, while others require access to PII data. We address these different team requests for non-standard access by using data marks. Snowflake offers a three level namespace and a very flexible roles hierarchy, which we use to create data marks that can access all data as inputs, but only present data to the particular team or group that needs access. For example, the enterprise team requires access to some customer PI. This is provided from the role layers and presented via roles only to the enterprise team. So in the previous slide, we talked about how we share data within our Snowflake data platform. We also have use cases that require access to our data outside of Snowflake. For these, we share by performing regular extracts to S3 for upstream teams and systems to consume. We're also trying out Snowflake's cross-account data sharing feature in a POC, where data from our Snowflake account will be shared with Canvas, Canvas security team. As you can imagine, the security team has very sensitive data and the mechanism of separating into different Snowflake accounts protects their data. At the same time, the security team has instant access to data from our Snowflake account and can use all the curated data sets to make their jobs a lot easier. Folks, that concludes our presentation today. So just as a summary, we've covered our tech stack, our architecture, described how we use Snowflake features to scale our data load, transform and dev processes. And lastly, we talked about how we share data to add value to the Canva product. Jose and I will now take questions from the audience. Thank you.